Okay, all right. So we're live. <laughs> so we're doing a video on um, Section 3.1, Part 2. We're going to talk about the finance problems here. So I um, hope you guys remember compounding interest, right? Um, should be pretty simple. The formulas I'll give to you, you don't have to memorize the formulas. Uh, now remember, we're using this equation, P of P equals P zero times one plus R raised to the T power. But we're gonna apply this to finance. So this formula is gonna be applied to money that you invest in an account. Um, so usually what happens is that um, instead of population, we're gonna be talking about the money that you're investing into an account. And instead of using rate of growth, we're gonna talk about annual percentage rate or APR. Uh, some of you guys might be familiar with APR, like if you have a credit card, um, but sometimes we'll have a certain percentage applied to the credit card. Uh, credit cards are usually pretty awful, um, unless you have a really good credit or really good plan. Sometimes APRs are over 20%, so that's not a good thing if you're borrowing money and then you gotta pay all the interest. But of course, we're talking about more money that you invest and how, what kind of uh, percentage you get. Now, it's gonna be the same kind of thing. Uh, we're gonna actually write it like this. I'll move, I guess. It's the screen. So it's really not that much different. Uh, the A is gonna be the amount in your account, kind of rhymes. Not your account after two years. So after a certain number of years, how much money do you have? Kind of like population, right? How much does the population grow after a certain period of time? Or maybe it might decline after a certain period of time? It's kind of the same thing. The P we call the principal. Or your initial deposit. How much did you initially put in the bank? Kind of the same thing when we look at population. What the population did you start with? So it's very similar to the P0. Um, the R is your percent interest. How much is your money growing by? By what percentage? And of course, T is time and years. Now, mind you, this is when you're... Um, adding the interest once at the end of each year. It usually doesn't happen in real life. Usually, if you have a bank account or a credit card, how often is the interest applied to your account? Yes. It can be quarterly. Uh, maybe for investments, it could be how about for credit cards. Monthly, yeah, you, you get a monthly bill, monthly statement, right. Um, so this one would not work for that, for that kind of situation. This one only works if it's just done once a year. The interest is applied to the account just once a year. So on the next page, oh, do you have a question, Gaddy? Interest. Yes, yeah, so how much interest is being applied to the account? Um, so again, A equals P times one plus R raised to the T power. You can use this if it's done once a year. So that's the assumption. But, but what if you're not applying the account once a year? So that's kind of the next question, next page. What if the bank account gives you an APR, but they give you interest at the end of each quarter? So how would you adjust the formula? You would divide R by four. So for example, um, I'll kind of do this off to the side. Say, uh, for example, no, not, not yet. I'll, I'll come back to it later. I'll, I'll just confuse you guys. I'll, a little premature. So you take whatever your interest rate is and you divide it by four. Um, how about monthly? Divide by 12. 
R log daily. Divide by 365. So you take R and divide by 12, or take R and divide by 365. So this means that the formula will change. The formula is going to look like this now. Instead of A, well, you still going to have the beginning part still look the same. So instead of 1 plus R raised to the T power, it looks like this. Where N is simply number of times interest is applied your account. Sometimes we say it's um, compounded. Compounded means exactly that. How often you applied interest to the account. And you can see that, that those words are used right there, right? K times per year. So if you're applying the account quarterly, that's four times per year. Monthly, 12 times per year. Daily, 365 times per year. So if you look at example four, Vince deposits 500 bucks in an account that pays 7% annual interest compounded quarterly. How much will he have saved after 10 years? So he opens an account, puts 500 bucks, and then does nothing. He just kind of sort of just doesn't even think about it. 10 years later, he gets a bank statement and says, oh, okay, here's, here's how much money I have. So really simple, just plug and chug, right? A equals 500 times 1 plus. Now, how do I finish this off? What, what am I going to put inside the currency? 1 plus what? So it's 0.07 divided by 4. You do have to flip the percentage. You have to have to happen... Um, Uh, four times a year. So you, you have to, you can't just do 7% each those four times. You actually have to split it. And the number, sorry, the uh, exponent will be what? Times 10, right. So it winds up becoming 500, 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 4 raised to the 40th power. Because what's going to happen is that you're doing this four times a year for 10 years. So apparently you're applying the interest 40 times with the interest being split equally among those four quarters. Um, anyone work it out and get an answer? Yeah, go ahead, Joyce. Uh, Ro yeah, roughly a thousand bucks. Yeah. So that's all. Um, it's a pretty simple process, not that hard. Again, the formulas will give to you. You don't have to memorize it. Now, just to give you a, a better understanding of why this formula works, it's always kind of a good idea. So I'm totally just kind of making up my own, my own notation here. But at the end of the first quarter, right, Wouldn't you do that at the end of the first quarter? You don't have to write this down. You can just sort of sit back and watch. But at the end of the first quarter, wouldn't you take 500 bucks and multiply by 1, one plus 0.07 divided by 4? And you got to split the interest rate, right? It's being split equally over four years. How about the second quarter? What would you do in the second quarter? You would take what you got in the first quarter, right? And would you multiply by the same thing again? You apply the same interest, right? How about the third quarter? Would you take what you got in the second quarter and do the same thing again? How about the fourth quarter? Would you take what you got in the third quarter? And again, you don't have to write the same, you just sort of just watch. I'm just kind of explaining what's happening here. So do you see what's happening is that this one plus plus seven raised oh, sorry, one plus plus seven divided by four. How many times am I multiplying it? One, two, three, four times. That's why you need that four right there. But of course, we didn't do it for one year. We did it for um, 10 years. 
So it's actually to the 40th month. Um, and then, of course, uh, the interest is being split among those four quarters, 0.7 by the four. So that's why the form works the way it does. Um, now let's see what happens if you compound more often. So we call this compounding continuously. So this is when interest, let me change that interest. is applied all the time, all the time. Every waking moment. As I'm talking, I'm making money. Not much, mind you. A little bit. Incremental. So what we're going to do, and this is um, where you're going to probably want to have a calculator, or if you have, if you see the next one has a calculator, kind of just for, so if you want to practice it, it's, it's probably good you grab one. Um, so, thousand, 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 one plus, one plus, one plus, one plus, one plus, one plus equals, 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 equals. I'm just setting all these up right now. And the rate is up obviously 8%. So it's 0 0 0.08, 0 0.08, 0 0.08, 0.08, and 0.08. Now, N's going to vary for each of these five scenarios. But every time, n is going to get bigger. If you're compounding annually, how many times does it happen per year? It's pretty obvious. Once, right? If you compound quarterly, how often does it happen? Monthly? Always. Daily? There's five. And then for those who watch the uh, musical Rent, uh, how many minutes in a year? I know now because I've done this problem two times, but I vaguely remember that. <laughs> 525,600? No? Okay, all right. <laughs> anyway. Or just do 365 times 24 times 60. Anyway. So we need to divide this by 1, 4, 12, 365, 525,600. And then, of course, we have to change the exponent. 1, 4, 12, 365. By the way, t is 1 in this case because you have for one year. t is 1, just so you know. 525600. Zero, zero. So, yeah, sorry for the small writing, but I think once you see what's going on on the left side, you know what to plug in for n, right? n equals 1, 4, 12, 365, 5. 25,600. Uh, if you work out the first one annually, you should get 1,080 bucks. Okay, great. 1,080 bucks. If you do quarterly, what, how much money do you make? So if, if someone could work out for me, tell me what they get. 1,000 times 1 plus 0.08 divided by 4 raised to the 4 power. Good. 1,083.43. Oh, sorry, what was that? No, 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 no. We're just plugging in because we, we already know what T is. We're not solving for next button. Yeah, T is 1. I mean, I should say 1 times 1 is the exponent for the first one. 4 times 1, 12 times 1. Uh, monthly, I think you get about 1,083. And uh, just because I remember doing this earlier this morning, I think you get like 28 cents 
than 29. <laughs> so the, the increase is pretty marginal, right? Um, if you were working on the calculator, that's what would happen. So, so what's the point here? The point is that as n approaches its positive infinity, a converges to a particular value. So a, meaning the amount of money you have in your account, gets closer and closer to a certain number. Um, what number is it getting closer to? Probably a thousand eighty three dollars and maybe twenty nine cents or thirty cents or something like that. So, and you do see they mentioned the expression e to the point oh eight. Um, it's, it's kind of a little strange, but remember, for what e equals. Um, e equal that, or roughly it was 2.7 dot dot dot, when n got really large. This is from um, 3.1 notes, part one. We talked about it near the end of the notes on, I think, the first day back from break. Um, so it's interesting that, doesn't that kind of look like the form we have so far? E plus, oh, we have questions, right? Value, yeah, particular value or number. Um, but if you look at uh, this part right here, that looks awfully like this right here. Looks pretty close to that. So what this means is if you're compounding continuously, it means all the time, every waking moment, you could rewrite your equation like that. You might remember this from uh, last year, but maybe it wasn't made very clear why the formula works the way it does. It works, the reason we have the E there is because you're replacing one plus one over N raised to the N power uh, with E. Remember N's getting really big compound continuously. We even saw that it converges to a certain value, just like how E converges to 2.7, blah, 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 when N gets really large. So that's why E, that's why E can play a role. That's like one practical application of E. Um, so we'll actually do a little plug and chug example five, like was with example six, and you guys have the rest of the class to work on homework. Um, so Mike's investing 450 bucks, he does this continuously. So how am I gonna write this? 450 times E raised to what power? Zero point zero nine times how many years? Six years. And you just plug in your calculator and work it out. So this is called simple interest, by the way, because you're basically just putting money into an account. And you're kind of letting it sit and seeing what happens after a certain period of time. What you should do in real life is you open an account, put money in, but then every year or every few months you keep putting more money in. But then the interest that's applied might vary depending on what your account balance was. Um, or sorry, um, the amount of in interest you make will change per year because sometimes I'll have more money than other years. But um, what do you guys get if you plug that in? Seventy-two bucks, roughly, and how many cents? Twenty-five. Good. Again, simple calculation, not that hard. But what you're going to see for homework, just so you know, you might see problems like this on homework, or maybe I want you to double it, and I want you to solve for when that happens. Remember what we did before? Y one. Y2, you're gonna see stuff like that in the homework. Not just a fact problem, but, you know, like we just, we just had in the recent homework on the worksheet. Um, again, you don't need to write that down, just more to let you know what you're gonna see in the homework. Okay, the last bit. Um, 
decide to invest, not invent. If you can invent money, that'd be pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> invest 8,000 bucks for six years, and you could choose between two accounts. One account gives you 7% interest, compound monthly. The other gives you 6.85% interest, a little less, but compounds more frequently. So which one's a better choice? If you compound monthly, it's going to look like this. Or oh, sorry. Got you a little carried away there. What form am I using for the second one? Not the same one, but E, right? It's continuous. Uh, 0 0.0685 and of course times six. Because that's six years. So you work each one out. So what you get? Which one's the better investment? Compounding 7% monthly or compounding with a slightly less percentage, but close. Of course, compounding more often. I think. Or the other one, 12,000. Yeah. As long as this is the better option. Okay. Pretty simple stuff. So, homework again, just finish the worksheet, numbers 2, 6, 10. Uh, if you're pretty tired, you can sort of just take it easy. It's fine. So, it's one of those weird rainy days. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Cool. We're done with the video.